Boldwood presents The Kill, written by Evie Hunter and read by Julie Maisie. The moral right of the author has been asserted. This performance is owned by Boldwood. Chapter 1 Sebastian Carter fixed Henshaw, a screw who'd had a hard-on for Seb throughout the final phase of his incarceration, with a cutting look. Dismissing the man from his mind as an irrelevance, he stepped through the unlocked gate and embraced the sweet, fresh taste of real freedom for the first time in six years. The majority of the prison officers had treated him with respect. Money talked, even behind bars. Especially there. Henshaw had made it clear that he bore Seb a grudge. He had probably been paid to make his life difficult by one of Seb's father's rivals. Seb's reputation had preceded him throughout the prison system, inflated no doubt through his father's influence, despite that interference being unasked for and unappreciated. Henshaw had it in for Seb, no question about it. Probably had a death wish too, given Seb's father's long reach and hard reputation, Henshaw was definitely on the take, Seb knew, but then who wasn't? Every man for himself in this dog-eat-dog -dog world. Henshaw had made sure that Seb was alone in the shower block when his father's rivals had wanted a quiet word. But the prison guard's jaw had dropped open when Seb walked away from the confrontation whistling and unscathed, which was more than could be said for the two men who'd launched a clumsy attack. Seb winked at the bent screw, and Henshaw knew his card had been marked. Seb had kept his head down and avoided confrontation whenever possible, unless it came looking for him, and had done his time quietly. Henshaw was the only thorn in his side in this open prison, his last accommodation at His Majesty's pleasure before they were obliged to release him. There had been others in the Cat 2 jails he'd occupied, though, Inmates who wanted to prove how hard they were. Screws who enjoyed their little bit of power and liked to enforce it. There were always others. Seb could have walked free three years previously had he admitted to the crime he'd been found guilty of committing and shown suitable remorse. But Seb hadn't done it and was buggered if he'd take the credit. Be lucky, Carter, Henshaw said, in what was for him a conciliatory tone as he pulled the gate wide for Seb to walk through. Seb didn't even look in his direction as he straightened the collar of the leather jacket that had festered in the prison store for the duration of his incarceration. It was loose around his waist. He'd lost weight but had toned up in the prison gym. His shoulders were as broad as ever, filling out the worn leather and his mind was still a steel trap. Six years was a long time to contemplate the form his revenge would take for being fitted up for murder and eventually going down for manslaughter. Seb had every intention of exacting that revenge, but without landing himself back inside. Outside the gates, Seb paused to throw back his head and breathed deeply the crisp autumnal air that kissed his face and brought his dormant body slowly back to life. A sleek black car with tinted windows glided up to his side. The back door swung open and Seb slid onto the soft leather. OK, boss. Seb's right-hand man, Patrick Ridson, asked from his seat beside the driver. Never better, Pat. Seb replied, his voice a low, gravelly rumble. A man of few words as a general rule, he had exercised his vocal cords even less frequently over the past six years, speaking only when he had something worth saying. The constant noise inside didn't need any contribution from him. The place was never quiet. Arguments, shouting, fights, men jerking off in the middle of the night others crying for their mothers. Seb had survived by allowing it all to wash over him and for his reputation as a man to be reckoned with to do the talking for him. 
he was afforded respect for the most part and left to his own devices. To a degree. Good to see you, boss, said Mark from behind the wheel. A bull of a man who could intimidate even when smiling, especially then. Mark was as loyal and dependable as they came. Seb's time inside was made that little bit easier by the knowledge that Mark was looking after what mattered the most to Seb. Mark would kill any man with his bare hands if he came within spitting distance of Seb's sister Lily, or even looked at her the wrong way. Mark, Seb replied. The two men exchanged a nod and a significant look. That was all it took. Normal business was resumed, and the first item on the agenda was for Seb to discover who'd fitted him up. Given that he'd had little else to think about for six years, he already had a pretty good idea where to start looking for answers. Pat did too, but Seb had made him hold off. This was Seb's mess, and he would deal with it. He didn't need anyone else to fight his battles for him and land inside themselves. This was personal. Besides, Seb had held on to an idealistic hope of not only uncovering the guilty party, but of clearing his own name too. That dream had helped him to get through. Welcome back to the land of the living, Pat said. Straight home. Got a surprise waiting for you. Better not be a fucking party. Pat chuckled. Do I look like I've got a death wish? Seb settled back and watched the passing scenery as he was driven in smooth comfort towards his palatial home outside of Chichester. A home that had been polluted by the police when they tore it apart, looking for material evidence of his guilt in the murder of that slimy scroat, Paul Blythe. Evidence that wasn't there to be found, hence the reduction in the charges to manslaughter, given the circumstantial nature of the CPS's case. The jury had clearly thought the case flimsy too, since he'd been convicted by a split majority. Seb reckoned the judge had shared their doubts, hence a relatively lenient sentence for a capital crime. A career criminal, Blythe was no loss to society. The judge would have known that too. Seb's only regret was that he hadn't sent the man to the hereafter himself. Had he done so... He would have managed the job with more finesse and certainly not left an obvious trail that had led directly to his door. One of the reasons why Seb hadn't appealed his sentence was that Blythe was now fish food. Couldn't have happened to a more deserving scumbag. Even so, he reasoned, appreciating the simple pleasure of watching the trees shedding their leaves in a kaleidoscope of colours as the car sped along a country road bordered by woodland, he hadn't been responsible for the bastard's demise. It had been clumsily done, a deliberate attempt to get at Seb's father through his estranged son, a father who was a career criminal. Jason Carter, a name that was feared and respected in equal measure on the streets of South London and beyond, a father with a criminal empire that Seb wanted no part of. But by using Lily to get to Jason Carter, the perpetrators had crossed a line, a line that Seb now fully intended to redefine. He thought of Lily and firmed his jaw. The time had come to get to the truth, and if that meant cracking a few heads, then so be it. Seb and Lily would enjoy walking over the leaves, he thought, as he continued to watch them fluttering down. Hearing them crunch beneath her boots would make her smile, and that thought brought a rare smile to Seb's lips too. His half-sister was everything to him, the only female in his life who mattered. And thanks to Blythe, she was now damaged goods, even more so than she had been before the brutal rape a beautiful woman with the body of an adult trapped inside the mind of a child. If he'd had any doubts about rooting out those responsible, and Blythe he knew had been acting on orders, 
then thoughts of the damage done to sweet, innocent Lily drove them away. Seb caught sight of his image in the tinted window. Now 35, he knew he'd changed. He was harder, uncompromisingly tough, and obviously older, as evidenced by the lines etched into his features. His hair was still thick, but the blonde was now threaded with the odd strand of grey. He pushed it away from expressionless blue eyes, uninterested in what he absently knew to be a handsome face that before his incarceration had attracted all the female attention he'd ever wanted, and then some. Keeping emotions locked up tighter than the prison's population had become the new norm, the only way to survive in that hellhole and to remain relatively sane. Having a reputation as a hard man, well able to handle himself, had been helpful. His bland expression gave nothing away, but he knew the experience had changed him. Would change any man, both inside and out. His father had embraced the criminal world, and Seb had grown up surrounded by villains. Despite that, or perhaps because of it, he had been determined to remain on the straight and narrow and make his own way in the world, without any help from the financial coffers stoked by his father's illegal activities. He now knew that life wasn't that simple. Mark, as always, drove on in silence, and Pat had the good sense to leave Seb to his cogitations. Pat had been Seb's only visitor these past six years. He had refused to see anyone else, especially Lily. Whether she would know him now, after six years, was the burning question. Perhaps it would be better if she didn't. He'd received regular reports and knew she was happy in her own private world, cared for 24-7 in the fortress that doubled as Seb's home. How anyone had got to her in the first place, Seb had yet to discover. He suspected inside help, but had trusted everyone who worked for him at the time, and anyway, a harsh interrogation had failed to turn up the guilty party. Seb had always known that his father's rivals would try to get to the old man through him. That was OK. He could look after himself. The possibility of them targeting Lily instead hadn't once crossed his mind, which was why he felt partially responsible for what had happened to her. He'd let her down in the worst way imaginable and would spend the rest of his life blaming himself for his error in judgment. He had, he knew, been too fucking taken up with making money to properly protect what was his. That was why he deserved to be banged up, even if neglecting the vulnerable wasn't the crime he'd been found guilty of committing. After the event, he'd made damn sure that his defences wouldn't be breached for a second time. Too little, too late. But his home really was his castle, and he wasn't about to suffer an intrusion from uninvited guests ever again. Not that the attack had happened in his grounds, but that was beside the point. He had underestimated the determination of his father's enemies, and it had cost his sister what little mind she had once possessed. Almost her life. Seb sometimes thought it would have been better if she hadn't pulled through. Home sweet home, Pat muttered, as the car swung onto the driveway that would lead to the double gates and boundary walls that guarded his estate discouraging the curious or those with criminal intent. Seb had fallen into deep contemplation and only now sat up and took proper notice of his surroundings. The grounds were pristinely maintained, just as they always had been. He could see the roof of the house in the far distance and felt his sombre mood, the near-permanent depression that had been his constant companion these past six years, gradually lifting. Be it ever so humble, he muttered, watching as Mark pressed a button inside the car and the gate swung open on silent hinges. Is John here? Seb asked. He's on call for tomorrow, Pat replied, sounding surprised by the question. I assumed you'd want to spend your first day home. Well, 
otherwise occupied. Seb grunted and let that assumption pass uncontested. Funnily enough, sex had been the thing he'd missed the least. The car came to a smooth halt on the gravel outside the front door, which was immediately opened by a smiling sight for sore eyes. They let you out then, Sam Greaves said as he opened Seb's car door. We were starting to wonder if they'd thrown away the key. Seb grinned as he climbed from the car and the two of them shared a man hug. Lots of backslapping that hid a wealth of emotion on Seb's part. The only emotion he'd allowed himself to feel for six long years. He and Sam went back to the mean streets of South London, where they'd grown up watching one another's backs. They'd gone through their school years together, eschewing membership of the various gangs on offer in favour of getting educated and making something of themselves. Even then, when his father was still establishing himself within the ranks of the criminal fraternity, Seb hadn't wanted to follow in parental footsteps and knew there was only one way to avoid the inevitable. Through the use of his brains, not brawn. Sam's efforts had been thwarted in that regard, when his mum had taken an accidental overdose and he had been forced to step up and support his younger siblings. But the bond between Sam and Seb had endured, and he was the only man Seb had truly trusted to run his home and oversee his business affairs during his incarceration. John fronted the organisation. Sam oiled the wheels from behind the scenes. Neither man could sneeze without word reaching Seb inside. He trusted them both, but had also learned not to trust anyone. The sound of laughter coming from the side lawn caused Seb's heart to stutter. The joyous sound of Lily's voice filled his senses and almost broke through the reserve that he had constructed around his heart. She's playing in the leaves, Sam told him. Seb swallowed and nodded, unsurprised that his thoughts in the car were a reflection of her actual occupation. How is she? he asked. Happy. Sam replied. She likes the new woman we've employed to look after her. Ava Harper. Seb knew all about the woman. She'd come with impeccable references, which had been thoroughly checked out. Lily had taken an immediate liking to her, which was the most important aspect of the hiring, and thus far there had been no meltdowns on Lily's part, which was nothing short of miraculous. She got upset for no apparent reason that any of the expensive experts Seb employed had been able to explain, and her rages were terrifying to witness. The storms tended to abate quickly, but Seb always worried that Lily, in her thrashing about and throwing things, would harm herself. Full-time residential care had been recommended, but Seb was having none of it. Lily was his responsibility, and his alone, Seb's father had tried to take her under his wing when Seb had been banged up, but Seb's lawyers had put a stop to that, and rather than become involved in a legal battle, the old man had backed down just as Seb had known that he would. Jason Carter never took on fights that he couldn't win by fair means or foul. Reputation was everything to the old man, and he knew that his myriad enemies would seize on any sign of weakness that highlighted the rift between father and son. Lily had already been used and abused. Seb made sure that his father was aware, in no uncertain terms, that he wouldn't stand for her being removed from the only home she had ever known. Her security. Jason had the good sense not to oppose him on such a vital issue, aware that past performance had robbed him of all parental rights insofar as Lily was concerned. Mark had driven off towards the six-car garage and Pat and Sam stood in the doorway watching Seb, who desperately wanted to round the side of the house and greet his sister, but hesitated. He wanted to ask if she was likely to recognise him, but the question stalled on his lips. He wanted to see Lily. The thought of doing so had sustained him through six long years, but now that the time had come, it felt as though his feet were glued to the ground. 
What went on in Lily's damaged mind? He wondered for the millionth time. The question had never seemed so relevant as it did at that moment. Did she remember her ordeal? Did she blame Seb for what had happened to her? If she did, then it wouldn't be nearly so fiercely as Seb blamed himself. Would she resent the fact that he had disappeared from her life so abruptly? He swallowed and forced his feet to move. Sam and Pat remained where they were. This was Seb's moment. He stood at the side of a lawn edged by trees shedding their leaves. Lily danced amongst them, blonde hair flying out behind her as she laughed joyously, throwing piles of dry leaves into the air and watching them tumble down. Some of them lodged in the hair of her companion, hair as russet as some of the leaves themselves, hair that tumbled halfway down Ava's back in a riot of unruly curls. As he watched, something inside of Seb unlocked. Ava was very attractive, more so than the pictures he'd been shown of her, and her laughter was infectious. Seb could gauge at a glance that she cared about Lily, took her disabilities in her stride and lavished upon her all the affection that a simple yet complex woman-child required. None of Ava's predecessors had stayed the course. Lily was hard work, her moods unpredictable, the security measures that Seb insisted upon restrictive. At first glance, Ava appeared to understand his sister in a way that only someone versed in disabilities of the mind possibly could. Seb suspected, then, that he didn't know as much about Ava's history as he thought he did, accounting for the fact that she was willing to take this position on when she was qualified to do so much more. Had she held a big part of herself back? The paranoia, survival instinct, call it what you will, that he'd developed inside, made him suspicious, and yet he didn't feel as though Ava was any sort of threat. What the hell? Lily threw another handful of leaves high in the air, laughing with the joy of simple pleasures. Her gaze fell upon Seb, and her laughter abruptly faded. Lily was wary of strangers, which is what Seb would now be to her. He held his breath, waiting to see what she would do. Ava noticed her charge's preoccupation and turned in his direction, watching Seb through wide green eyes but saying nothing. She must know who he was. She would have been told that he was expected home today. But still she remained silent clearly allowing Lily to make up her own mind. That was sensible, Seb conceded, even if he wondered how Ava felt about being in the employ of a convicted killer. Presumably she didn't mind too much, or she wouldn't have taken the position. Lily's lips parted as confusion clouded her expression. Now was a defining moment. She would either scream blue murder or... or what? Seb had no way of knowing. Hey, Pumpkin, he said softly. Lily blinked at the sound of Seb's voice and remained stock still. After what seemed like an eternity, the confusion left her eyes and she hurtled herself into Seb's outstretched arms. Seb! Seb! she cried. Seb held her close, his heart too full for words, as he breathed in the essence of the woman-child whom he had failed so badly. She hadn't forgotten him. At last, something had gone right for him. Chapter 2 Ava's heart palpitated as she watched the long-awaited reunion. She kept her distance during this most personal of moments, but had no intention of being moved by it. Despite her own reservations about Sebastian Carter, Lily's joy was so unbridled that she was obliged to wipe tears away with the back of her hand. Get a grip. She had been in her position for almost a year now and was fond of Lily, despite her brother's dangerous reputation. Ava had gambled on Carter not admitting to murder. 
He had protested his innocence throughout his trial and refused to take the stand in his own defence. Her research had revealed that it wasn't uncommon for the accused to go into denial. Juries could be unpredictable in the verdicts they reached. If that gamble didn't pay off, once the reality of prison life sank in, those innocents came clean and expressed remorse to parole boards in the expectation of halving their sentences. Not so Carter. Ergo, he'd had to serve his full sentence, and Ava had seized the providential opportunity to make herself indispensable to his sister, his one weakness, before his release. What she hadn't expected was to come to love Lily so unreservedly. But then again, she reasoned, how could she seriously have supposed that it wouldn't happen that way? Lily was a delight, trusting and vulnerable, an absolute treasure, and so very easy to control once one understood what triggered her mood swings. Darkness, loud voices and angry words rated highly in that respect. Living within this fortified mansion wasn't as restricting as she had thought would be the case. She had become accustomed to the quiet and grown rather fond of the estate when no expense had been spared on life's comforts. She and Lily had explored the surrounding countryside extensively, taking long rambles and picnicking during some of the long, hot summer days in the South Downs National Park. Ava had resented the fact that they were always accompanied on their rambles by Mark Pearson, a man whom Seb Carter trusted and who Lily appeared to like. Mark, despite being polite and unobtrusive, made her feel as though she was under constant scrutiny. Her every move probably reported back to the man behind bars. In spite of his incarceration, she had come to realise that nothing important happened on the outside without Carter's prior knowledge and approval. Mark was a bull of a man with a soft underbelly who could make Lily giggle like the child she still was inside her damaged mind. Ava had grown to respect his loyalty to a man who had been in prison for six years. Be that as it may, she hadn't once lost sight of her true purpose – and wouldn't let anything stand in her way. Not even Lily. Questions had to be answered, and she had recently set the ball rolling by making a few inquiries that had got her nowhere. Within these walls, or more precisely, within the head of her admittedly rather formidable employer, who now had his sister ensconced in his arms, was the place to find those answers. Ava was convinced of the fact. The small, devoted band of people who had kept the place going had nothing but good things to say about Seb Carter, especially Jesse, the housekeeper who had known Seb since he'd been a lad. Well, obviously they wouldn't badmouth him, she reasoned. They all adamantly believed that he did not kill the man he'd been convicted of bumping off, and Ava was inclined to believe them. Not that she would have blamed him if he had, she thought, watching the reunion through moist eyes, reminded of the ordeal that Lily had suffered at the victim's vile hands. How anyone could force themselves upon such a sensitive, trusting little soul was beyond Ava's understanding and made her seethe with anger whenever her mind dwelt upon the issue, which wasn't often. She couldn't change the past, but could would shape the future. Otherwise, what was the point? It was a testament to Carter's character, she supposed, that he had refused to take responsibility for a crime that he hadn't committed. But that was the only concession she was prepared to make in his favour, at least until she had got the measure of the man himself and decided whether or not he was his father's stooge after all. But already she doubted it, because she knew how fiercely he had fought from behind bars to keep Jason Carter well away from his own daughter. Seb lifted his head and his gaze clashed with hers. His eyes were moist, a testament to his adoration for his poor, damaged little sister, now twenty-five. A love that Ava knew was reciprocated. 
Lily's eyes shone with happiness as she clung like a limpet to her brother's neck, burying her face in his shoulder and giggling at something he whispered to her. Lily kept a picture of Seb beside her bed and kissed it every night. Fiercely affectionate, she kissed Ava too, stealing her heart a little more each day in the process and almost distracting her from her true reason for being in this fortress. Almost. Lily's excited screams gradually receded. Seb placed her back on her feet, but she clung to his hand and dragged him onto the lawns. Clearly, he was expected to join in her games, and Ava would be interested to gauge his reaction. Somehow, she wasn't surprised when, without hesitation, he gathered up a massive handful of leaves and threw them in the air. Lily clapped her hands and screamed. Seb took her hand and led her to a pile of leaves that he started stamping on. Lily giggled and did the same thing. Leaving his sister to a game that now occupied her complete attention, Seb wiped his hands down his thighs and turned to face her. Finally, Ava's moment had come. Hi, you must be Ava. He extended a big hand, and Ava slipped her own into it. Seb Carter, thank you for taking such good care of my sister. I can see how happy she is, and that means a lot to me. It's not difficult, Mr Carter, Ava replied. She is a very easy person to love. Call me Seb. Ava swallowed taken aback by his friendliness, to say nothing of the exacting scrutiny that he subjected her to. All right. They both turned to watch Lily, still stamping on the leaves and laughing. A puppy that Seb knew nothing about, a ragtag creature of indeterminate pedigree, appeared from nowhere and joined in the game, wagging with enthusiasm. What is that? Seb asked pointing a finger at the creature and looking highly dubious. It's not a that. It's a fine example of... Ava bit her lip to prevent herself from smiling. Well, it's a stray, if you must know. Lily and I found him half-starved in the woods. I think he must have been dumped from a car. Honestly, some people can be so heartless and it makes me so angry. She paused to draw breath unable to read anything from Seb's stony expression. I brought him back here and fed him up. Now he doesn't want to leave. And, as you can see, Lily loves him. Yes, but I'm not convinced. Well, if you don't want him to stay, you'll have to be the one to tell her. That's blackmail. Seb surprised her by smiling. But of course he can stay. Lily has always liked animals, but I wasn't sure if it would be safe to... I'll have you know that Wizard sleeps on Lily's bed. Wizard? Seb raised both brows, clearly fighting his amusement. That was her choice. We've been reading Harry Potter. Seb held out a hand to the puppy, who loped up to him, tail working overtime, and licked Seb's fingers. Lily watched Wizard jumping up and scrambling at Seb's legs and clapped her hands in delight. With his attention on the puppy, Ava took the opportunity to study the man she'd heard spoken of for so long in almost reverent terms. Rugged features, deeply etched with lines, defined a strong jaw and sharp cheekbones. He was a handsome man, yet tough and resourceful, Ava knew that he would have to be in order to survive six years locked up. Despite all the complaints about prison being too lenient, Ava knew it was a harsh regime in which the weak were unconditionally exploited. He was definitely handsome, she conceded, aware of the close physical resemblance between brother and sister. Thick locks of dark blonde hair constantly fell across arresting blue eyes, that appeared to miss little. He brushed it impatiently aside, and Ava was gripped by an irrational desire to do it for him, which was crazy. She hadn't expected to like the man, or to trust him, but was already a fair way to doing both. Welcome home, Ava said when Lily and the puppy ran off, 
scattering leaves in their wake, and she found herself alone with him again. The sweet taste of freedom, he replied, tilting his head back, breathing deeply and closing his eyes. She hadn't expected such a direct reference to his incarceration, and it threw her. She said nothing. How has Lily been? he asked, opening his eyes again and studying her in a manner that she found disconcerting. She arched a brow. You don't already know? I'm asking you. His words were crisp, almost impatient, as though he wasn't accustomed to being challenged. She gets stressed less frequently. I think the puppy helps. She feels responsible for Wizard, which can only be a good thing. I was obviously too protective, thinking an animal might add to her anxiety issues, when it's already clear to me that the opposite is true. I didn't mean to undermine your authority, or think I knew better than you, Ava said, peeved by the accusation in his tone. Seb sent her a sharp look. I was trying to be complimentary. The suggestion of a smile flirted with his lips. Clearly, I have lost touch with the social graces. Well, if you disapprove of the way I handle Lily, I'm sure you will let me know. Count on it. This time he definitely smiled, but the gesture looked strained, as though he was unaccustomed to showing emotion of any sort, which Ava supposed was likely the case. But now, if you will excuse me, he turned away, then swivelled on his heel and faced her again. Have a drink with me later, once Lily settled. We need to talk. We do? The offer took Ava aback. Everyone in the house was agreed on one thing. Seb Carter was a man of few words who was not socially disposed. Apparently, he liked the ladies but never dated anyone long term. A loner, he preferred to keep everyone except Lily at a distance, including his father. Especially him. Sure, he shrugged. I need more details about Lily's progress. OK. Ava thought she could supply that information without the necessity to drink with him, but wasn't about to reject the invitation. Besides, he was her boss, so she wasn't left with much choice. I'll see you later, then. Lily called to Ava, who returned to her charge, pushing thoughts of her complex employer to one side. He's out. Ruby Asquith curled her feet beneath her backside on the soft leather sofa she occupied at one end of her expansive office at the Black Iris, still the premier nightclub in South London, and nodded in response to Bart Fleming, her head of security's words. When? she asked. This morning, early. He's already back at his place. How touching. Ruby examined her blood-red nails, the exact same colour as the dress she planned to wear that evening, tutting when she noticed a tiny chip. Keep a watch on him. He will be out for revenge, which means he'll start digging to see if he can find out who actually killed that waste of space Blythe, and I don't want him to come gunning for me. Bart nodded. Can do when he leaves his grounds, but that house of his is impossible to infiltrate. All his people are annoyingly loyal. There must be a weak link. Find it. A cleaner, a bloody gardener. Someone must need money and be willing to spy. Bart nodded. I'll see what I can do, but it could be dangerous, drawing the attention to us that you don't want, if it backfires. Do it anyway, Ruby replied impatiently. I have a bad feeling about this. Can we set him up with one of our girls, do you suppose? He seldom sees the same girl twice, or didn't before his stretch. Doesn't like to give the impression of commitment. Ruby huffed impatiently, well aware of it. If he's coming after me for any reason, I need to know about it before it happens. He won't get anywhere near you, Bart said with authority in his tone. Never underestimate a man who's just come off a sick stretch he didn't do anything to deserve. He will want answers. Ruby, you're untouchable. She flicked her finger towards the bar in the corner. Without speaking, Bart opened a bottle of Krug, 
poured a measure into a crystal flute and handed the glass to Ruby. She downed it in one unladylike swallow. She wouldn't allow anyone other than Bart, her rock, the man who had proved his loyalty time and again and would take her secrets to the grave, to know it. But she was scared shitless of Seb Carter and his thirst for revenge. Jason is due over later. We'll thrash out the terms of our agreement without lawyers muddying the water in an effort to justify their outrageous fees. She glanced at the screens on one wall, showing images of the activity in various rooms. It was still early, and there weren't many punters in the club yet. A couple of people were sitting at a blackjack table. One of Ruby's best girls was going down on a fat businessman in a private booth. Another was whacking a skinny backside with a riding crop. Business as usual. Bart shrugged his meaty shoulders. OK. I'll let them know downstairs. Bart left the room moving quietly for such a large man. Ruby contemplated refilling her glass, but decided against it. She never allowed herself to be out of control. With a sigh, she uncoiled her legs and returned to her desk. There was paperwork. Always paperwork. Ruby didn't commit anything important to the vagaries of computer systems that could easily be hacked. She picked up her gold Mont Blanc pen, and tapped it against her teeth as she read through the terms of the agreement she had reached with Jason Carter. He was a tough negotiator and wanted everything his way, but Ruby hadn't come down in the last shower. Jason wanted out of the club, and showing a weakness in that regard could be his Achilles heel. Seb returned to the house, unsurprised to find a high-end escort waiting for him. Pat's idea of a welcome home present, presumably. Not such a bad plan, really, albeit predictable. Seb, surprised by his lack of enthusiasm and in no mood to drag it out, relieved his frustrations quickly and sent her on her way. What he really wanted was a heart-to-heart -heart with John. He'd received regular reports regarding his business Reports that were opened and avidly read by prison officers before reaching him. That was OK. They wouldn't find anomalies because there were none to be found. Unlike his father, Seb's business was strictly legitimate. That's what the police had been unable to get their heads around. And one of the reasons, Seb often thought, that he'd been so clumsily framed for murder. Nothing stuck to Jason Carter, who was an out-and-out -out villain, so his enemies targeted his only child who'd gone straight, the one who Jason allowed the world to know he was proud of, thereby showing fallibility. Seb wondered if that was why he'd been set up. Despite being estranged from his father, the fit-up would have focused Jason's mind distracting him from his nefarious activities as he screamed for answers. Even as a grown man, Seb was a little intimidated by his father. A hard man. He hadn't survived as a leading player in the murky London underworld by letting his emotions get the better of him. Seb knew the old man had launched full-scale war against all those he even suspected of involvement in the frame-up. Not that Seb had seen or spoken to him, he'd flat out refused, but word had still got back to him. Seb ate with Pat, but found himself craving solitude once the meal was over. His trusted friend seemed to realise it and made himself scarce. Peace and quiet, to say nothing of alone time in luxurious surroundings, were commodities sadly lacking on the inside, and Seb fully intended to make the most of them on this, his first night of freedom. He sat in front of an open log fire in his lounge, savouring the taste of the ruinously expensive cognac he'd poured for himself, thinking about his next move. Wondering too about Ava Harper. There was something vaguely familiar about her, but Seb was pretty sure they'd never met before. She was the same age as Lily, and so would have still been a teenager when he went down for Blythe's murder. So even if their paths had crossed, 
he wouldn't have spared her a second glance. Underage girls definitely didn't feature on his radar. He'd checked her references again after meeting her today. She'd worked in Switzerland as an au pair for the past three years and for a couple of different UK families prior to that. All her previous employers had supplied glowing references and regretted her decision to leave their employ. Seb threw back his head and closed his eyes, thinking that she seemed almost too good to be true. And yet, Seb had seen for himself the miracles she had worked with Lily. So, perhaps, she was the real deal, and something had finally gone right for him. For now, he would give her the benefit of the doubt. As though summoned by the power of his own thoughts, a tap at the door preceded Ava putting her head round it. I am disturbing you?